Welcome to Baby Boomer Tales. My name's Jim. Last week's episode was kind of busy, fought with the munchies and Homer and all that music and all that going on and going into restaurants and all that. It should be calmer today. I've got the munchies locked up in their room. I just put a big old bowl of sugar there and you know, they pretty much look like a big cornflake. So they're very happy with that sugar. They'll sprinkle it on themselves, laugh and dance. They'll look around, make sure there's no milk anywhere to be found. And when they discover there's no milk there, then the party will happen. Nothing's quite like going to a munchy party. Maybe we'll do a episode one day those little guys having a party will just sit there and observe and it's like something you've never seen before I'll tell you that so anyway enough about them I don't want to even think about them they're all over me all over the place all of the time our unusual facts this week your brain burns around 400 to 500 calories per day your heart beats about 100,000 times per day. They say, I don't get a workout. All that muscles pumping and brain burning and all that stuff. Your fingernails grow faster than your toenails. And the nail on your middle finger grows faster than any of the other nails on your hand. The gluteus maximus is the largest muscle in the body. It's the large muscle in your buttocks your butt muscle. Well, anyway, just so you know that you probably work out on your butt more than anything else. (laughs) Now for the top 10 55 years ago. That's the top 10 popular songs this week in 1969. Number 10, Oh What a Night, The Dells. Number nine, Hot Fun in the Summertime, Sly and the Family Stone. Number eight, I'll Never Fall in Love Again, Tom Jones. Number seven, by Oliver, Gene. Number six, I Can't Get Next to You, The Temptations. Number five, by Bobby Sherman, Little Woman. Number four, Easy to Be Hard. Three Dog Night. Number three, Honky Tonk Woman, The Rolling Stones. Number two by Credence Clearwater Revival, Green River. And the number one song for the second week in a row, it'll be number one for four weeks in a row by the time it's all said and done, by the Archies, Sugar Sugar. Now, I wasn't much for bubblegum music. I think I've let that be known here, and the Archies may have been the bubblegum kings. But I can kind of still remember this song. You are my darling girl. Isn't that one of the lines? Everybody has something to offer. On a football team, you can't all be the quarterback. And you don't have to always be the big guy. With the onset of the soccer-style kicker, I believe it was back in the 60s with Jan Stenerud of the Kansas City Chiefs. I think he was the first one. Before that, they'd have a tackle kicking or, you know, a lineman, some some big guy with a lot of power behind him because he had a lot of weight going on there. And all of a sudden, these little soccer-style kickers came into the league and they could kick it more accurately and further than those big old linemen kicking. Changed the kicking game of football forever. But a kicker cannot play linebacker and a wide receiver is not going to be an offensive lineman. They're not big enough, but they have something to offer. Let me put it this way. The offensive lineman may have more to offer than the wide receiver. He protects the quarterback. So just because you are the punter on the team does not mean that you're not important. You're every bit as important 
as the next guy. Now I know on today's game, the quarterback is by far the most important position, and they are paid accordingly, but everybody on that team has something to offer. Same way with baseball. The catcher in no way can be the pitcher. I just don't think I can see Yogi Bear out there pitching to Frank Robinson. I just don't see that in my mind's eye. But the catcher is a very important position. Now, I saw Yogi play the outfield, play left field before, and it wasn't pretty, but he got it done. What I'm saying is not everybody can be the pitcher. What about the ball boy? You're not going to get Aaron Judge being a ball boy. You're not. But that ball boy is important to the team. Everybody has something to offer. Same way in basketball. There's a little guy named Muggsy Bogus, or Bogues. Well, I'm not sure. Muggsy wasn't even six feet tall. I think he was very, very short. Yet he played on a team with seven footers in a game full of giants. And he was very, very good. The same way in a choir, the guy that sings bass cannot sing soprano. And the same way the soprano couldn't fulfill the bass's place in the choir. In a play, a stagehand is every bit as important as the actor. Well, you may say that the actor is more accomplished at his trade. But is that actor more accomplished in his trade than the stagehand in their trade? I think both positions are very, very important. They both have something to offer. Every bit as much as a person making sure that you have a ticket to get into the show. If I go up and down my main street of my little hometown when I was a kid, those merchants up and down the street all played a part. And just because one business may have been more successful than the next does not mean that the business that was less successful was any less necessary. As I looked up and down my main street, we have Sonny and Ruthie at the bowling alley. I think they are maybe the only people in that town that could have kept that bowling alley going. Those pin setters were quite old and they'd break down all the time. And either Sonny or Ruthie were right there to fix it as quickly as possible so you could continue your game. Now, could they do something else? Could one of the merchants walk into the bowling alley and do what Sonny and Ruthie did? Possibly, but that wasn't their place. It was Sonny and Ruthie's place, and they had something very valuable to offer. Same way with Pete, next door to the bowling alley. He offered a service that was second to none, taking care of our cars and trucks, furnishing us with gas, knowing that when you left your vehicle there, that the most honest guy in the county was going to take care of it and not try to sell you something you didn't need. What about Bob at the drugstore? Or Louis or Dwight, for that matter? There are all three pharmacists at that drugstore. Could my dad have been the pharmacist? He didn't go to school for that. Could Ricky up at the Columbine Cafe be the pharmacist? I don't think so. Number one, they wouldn't let you smoke cigars and put a prescription together, I don't think. But could Bob have cooked that chili or biscuits and gravy like Ricky did? with practice, but that wasn't Bob's place. He had something to offer at that drugstore, same way as Ricky did at his restaurant. Talk about having something to offer. Barb at the theater, she almost did everything at that theater, and yet she did not own it. She worked there. She also was a lunch lady at the school, but she was one of the most valuable people in that town. That theater would have melted into holy chaos if it wasn't for Barb. Everybody, absolutely everybody, has something to offer. Francis at the trading post, before the trading post was a twinkle in his eye, during World War II, 
He saved absolutely every nickel he ever made. My Uncle Charlie was quite a businessman that seemed to struggle at being successful in his businesses. Charlie and Francis moved to my little hometown and opened the trading post. And with Francis's money and Charlie's business sense and knowledge, they became wildly successful. And the wonderful thing about all that is, Charlie taught Francis's son, Jay, everything he knew. And so he passed that down. And Jay passed it on also. Everybody has something to offer. Back in the day was a newspaper boy, the guy that threw the paper in your yard in the bushes, riding his bicycle up and down the street, the crack of dawn. Is he less important than the star reporter or even the editor? No. The most powerful machine in the world is reduced to just a bunch of metal if it is missing one small piece to that machine. That little piece breaks and the whole thing shuts down. Everybody, everywhere has something to offer. Never feel like you are not important. That what you say doesn't matter. That maybe you're invisible. Everybody has something to offer. And maybe one kind word to somebody will stop that whirlpool that that person's going down into. And that kind word was really a lifesaver that that person could hold on to and cling on to and pull themselves out of that desperate place they were. Just because little old you showed a friendly smile and a kind word. A family's not really a family if it's two adults. I'm sorry, you may think it is, and that's fine. But for the sake of my illustration here, two adults really doesn't make a family. When my wife and I got married, we had the start of a family, but it really wasn't a family until we had children. Now, I married into her family, and she married into mine. Understand that. But the children made the difference. So let's say, out of argument's sake, that two adults don't make a family, but one adult and one child do. Let me go a little further. No adults and two children, for whatever happened, that is still a family. So I'm not saying that two adults is not a family. Am I getting too deep or too complicated or too way out there? I've been hanging out with the munchies. Now, you know, give me a break. All I'm saying is a little child that doesn't know anything, maybe newborn, they're dumb as a rock, right? They haven't had the opportunity to learn anything yet. And yet they have something to offer. They bring love into situations like nobody's business. Ulysses S. Grant, U.S. Grant, was almost a loser in everything he did. He went broke many times in business. He was really a drunk that just could not focus on anything, trying to get his life together. And yet when Abraham Lincoln called upon him, he led our country to the end of the Civil War and was a terrific terrific general and became president of the United States. Did he still have problems? Of course he did. But Lincoln saw something in that man that he had something to offer. He didn't look at all his failures. And that's what we need to do is we just need to look at a person and think to ourselves, this person has something to offer. Something good's inside that, even if that person doesn't show anything. I think that's what God does with us. By golly, he took us from being this a blob of clay and made us into something in his own image. We have something to offer. Never give up. Never think that you don't matter. I hope this made you smile. You can find us at babyboomertales.com. Once you've landed on our webpage, there are places that you can access our podcasts, access our videocasts, 
go to our boomers general store and maybe buy a baby boomer tails coffee mug or a ball cap find our facebook page through that website our linkedin page and our twitter account oh it's called x these days Wake up each day with a grateful heart and always be kind. It's good for your soul. Thank you for riding along today. I'll be back next Wednesday. Peace out. Ah. There. We are out. We have escaped the room. <laughs> Don't tell Jim. <laughs>